Hello, and welcome back to Luna Bakes, where despite all precautionary measures, you still somehow might end up with cat hair in your food. For legal reasons, that was a joke. Because it is finally starting to feel like fall here, we are making pumpkin bread today. As you can see, I have all of my necessary white girl fall decorations in order to make it happen. So without further ado, let's get started. We're starting by preheating our oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and then greasing our 9x5 loaf pan with my favorite pan, baking spray. Is it vegetable oil? Is it flour? I don't really know. It kind of works as both. Now, much to my chagrin, we are breaking away from the metric system for this recipe. We are also breaking away from measuring our ingredients with a scale. So I'm doing my absolute best to pack in and level off one and three fourths cups of flour. This is pumpkin bread, so we're gonna combine all of our dry stuff and all of our wet stuff separately and then add the dry stuff back into the wet stuff. To our flour, I'm adding one tablespoon of pumpkin pie spice. I would not recommend this style of measuring, but for this instance, it worked. And then we're adding two teaspoons of cinnamon, and in this instance, it did not work. Did that look like two teaspoons? <laughs> you have it in there? I'm gonna call that good. I can't win, ever. After emotionally recovering from the cinnamon incident, we added one teaspoon of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of baking soda and stirred those dry ingredients together. After that's all combined, it's time to start working on the wet stuff, which starts by melting half a cup of butter. You're using this favorite ingredient. Huh? You're using Lobo's favorite ingredient. You want some of this? After getting the butter melted, it was time to crack open our 15 ounce can of pumpkin puree. Now, there is absolutely a way to make this yourself. I've done it before, it involves roasting a pumpkin in the oven, but after my experiment with making my own sweetened condensed milk last week, I simply did not have the mental bandwidth to home make another ingredient. So our melted butter gets added in with our pumpkin, that gets mixed until combined, and then we add in 3 fourths cup of plain white sugar. This recipe also gets three-fourths of a cup of light brown packed sugar, all of which gets mixed together until combined. If I ever try to apply at a job at a restaurant and they see these videos, I, w I won't get it because they'll think I'm think I'm just gonna shed all over the food. Which I probably would. Add eggs and vanilla and start to combine. Really, Gordon Ramsay would be like coming for my head. And my cat's heads. I added one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract along with three eggs and then that all got mixed together until nice and combined. Gave the bowl a little scrapey scrape and then it was time to add the dry stuff to the wet stuff. And after a little bit of stirring, our batter started to look like pumpkin bread. This next step is completely optional, but I think chocolate and pumpkin together is absolutely delicious. So I got some Nestle dark chocolate chips and added it until my ancestors whispered to me to stop. No real hard and fast rules on how much chocolate to put into your bread. The delicious chocolatey pumpkiny batter then went into our pre-prepared loaf tin and got ready to go into the oven. After 60 minutes in the oven, this bread puffed up so nicely. So right at the hour mark, I gave it the old knife test and she passed with flying colors. Mm -hmm. 
So she came out of the oven and then I let this rest for approximately two hours just because I did not want my loaf to fall apart. Because let's be honest here, she looks gorgeous. After a few hours, I went in for a middle slice to get a nice look at that cross section and how I wish we have developed the technology for you to smell what my kitchen smelled like at this moment because it was glorious. And I'm happy to report it was baked all the way through and my bread slice came out completely intact. It tastes like fall. It's really good. There's not too much cinnamon in it, which I was kind of worried about. Yeah. You wouldn't think chocolate and pumpkin, but I use dark chocolate chips, so it wasn't overly sweet, and it's really, really good. And it just, I don't want to take another bite just so I can smell it, because it smells so good. Oh, it's like super moist, but it's baked all the way through. See that? It's nice and spongy. You can see all the spices running through it. Mmm. 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 But my favorite part is the top crunchy crusty part. It, it kind of honestly, it tastes a lot like the Starbucks pumpkin bread. Way better. Way better. I thought this was a great way to kick off the fall baking season and I'm so excited to bring you guys some more real real soon. I'll see you guys next time.